점수 잡는 hackers. Hello guys, we're back with our second lesson. We're finishing up test 1, model 1, from question 22 to 27. These are all transitions and rhetorical synthesis types, so we'll be working on those reading comprehension skills as well. Let's start with question 22. This is a transition type question, so you're going to start off reading the first sentence. Okay, onlookers from SpaceX cheered despite their Starship cruise vessel exploding roughly four minutes after launch. Now, you see the colored words? This is the main verb of the sentence. Usually, the main verb is showing the main action, so it's the easiest to skim through and find the main verb to understand what it's talking about. Now, the company, you notice how the subject has changed? The first sentence subject is talking about onlookers, which means it's the audience, spectators that are looking. But the second sentence is focusing on the company as the subject. They had weren't. Okay, guys, notice also a change in tense shift. Okay, they had weren't, which means it had happened in the past, that the chances completing its planned orbit were low, that merely accomplishing liftoff would be sufficient. Okay, it would be enough to deem, which means to regard, the test flight a success. So two things. The tense form has shifted, and also the subject has changed. Now let's take a look at the answer choices. For transition types, you must be very skilled at grouping each transition. Okay? The main group is divided into three types. The first type of group is called continuation, which means it continues the information from the previous sentence. The second type is called cause and effect, which means the previous sentence is the reason, it's the cause, and the following sentence is the result, the effect. And the third group is called contrast, which shows opposite or transitioning relationships between the two sentences. Now, notice what I wrote down right here would be considered the sub-function, which means you go into more micro-detail about what each group's transition function as. Sequence would show time chronology, time order, and similarity would show that A and B are different ideas, but they have a common similarity. Now, in this case, let's cross out the words that would be wrong. For sure, you're using process of elimination. Just because they cheered didn't result in them warning beforehand. That would not be cause and effect. The previous sentence has to be the direct cause or reason, and it's not the case. So you can cross that out. And also, you've got con two continuations, and you've got one contrast. But in this case, you can cross out continuation subfunction similarity because A and B are not similar ideas. Now you have B and C, but in order for a sequence transition to be the answer, you must have some sort of period hint. In this case, the tense form could be a period hint. So, in this case, because you have a period hint, you could consider B as the best answer. But why would, however, C be wrong? Let's take a look at the passage again. Now, this sentence and this sentence is not in direct contrast. They cheered despite it exploding. And this is also about something different. It's about warning them about this explosion. So they're not in a contrastive relationship. So the best answer is B. You can also cross out contrast as well. And for question 23, Theodore Roosevelt's continued career in politics resulted in an eventual run for vice president. When his running mate, William McKinley, was elected president, okay, um, Roosevelt became vice president. It also talks about McKinley again in the following sentence. He was assassinated. So first of all, he was elected, but the second part is talking about a different action. He was killed, assassinated, and upon McKinley's death, Roosevelt became the president of the United States. Okay. So, two different actions, you think about that, and continue to grouping. Furthermore, would be continuation group. It provides additional information, adding on to the previous sentence. Consequently, shows cause and effect. 
specifically shows continuation but providing more detail, and however shows contrast. So in this case, also cross out what's wrong. Because he was elected the president doesn't make him the result of an assassination. So you can cross that out. And furthermore, would have to provide more information about the election itself. But in this case, the action has changed. So continuation of providing emphasis or detail would be wrong. So the best answer in this case would be he was elected, but he was killed, which means the end of his election. Two different actions. However, can also be used to show transition. So in this case, it would be close to the function of transitioning two different contents. Now, the next question 24 is also transition type. Biologists at the university have discovered a vast number of previously unknown viruses hiding in the DNA of single-celled organism. Up to 10% in some species is made up of viruses that do not harm their host, but instead act as a sort of an immune system. All right, so it got a pretty positive connotation. And it also brings a positive connotation right after, protecting the organism from harmful virus. Okay, both are positive. Now this is where they're asking you the transition. The viruses and their hosting eukaryotes exist in a state of symbiosis. Do you guys know what this means? Sim means together. So biosis means they live together in terms of a mutual relationship. Ensuring, okay, ensuring one another survival. Again, positive connotation. These are all connected. Okay, let's take a look at the answer choices. Obviously, it's not going to be contrast because they all have the same positive connotation that connects the content. But then you see cause and effect. You also see continuation. Now, these two forms are very confusing. So I'm going to give you guys one tip for that. The tip is check to see whether the emphasis is on the previous sentence to choose a continuation group transition. Now, if the previous sentence is emphasized, choose the continuation transition. If the following sentence has logically developed, then choose cause and effect transition. It's really difficult to see whether it's logically developed or not, but it all leads to looking at whether the previous sentence has been emphasized. So again, do not harm and protecting. Was this emphasized more than the following sentence? Actually, no, because it talks about these two things, which connects and leads them to categorize them as a symbiotic relationship. So it's not showing time sequence. It's also not showing example, but it's showing a logically developed conclusion that it's a symbiosis that they're living in. So the best answer in this case would be B. This is slightly confusing for a transition type, so keep this in mind. Previous sentence is emphasized, then you go with the continuation transition. But if you want to choose the cause and effect one, you have to see if the two sentences are logically developed. Hello guys, um, this is lesson 9. We're working on test 3, model 2. We're working on the entire model from question 18 up to 27. So let's get straight to the standard English convention types. Question 18. All right, so this is a standard English convention type, which means you should focus on the grammatical rule that they're asking. So it's actually pretty ideal for us to take a look at the answer choices first. So you take a glance through A, B, C, D, you see apostrophes, you see commas, so you realize that this is a possessive form, right? So going back to the passage, what you want to do is you want to start where they're starting the sentence with the blank included, okay? So dating blank signs to over 40,000 years ago. Now, since it starts with an ing participle form, you know that this is a dependent clause that's attached to an independent clause. So the basic components of an independent clause is it has a subject, she. It also has a verb, believes. And then you have a relative pronoun that brings a relative clause, right? So this is an independent clause right after the comma. So in this case, they're asking us to look for a possessive form that goes within a dependent clause, 
Right, so let's go back to A, B, C, D. You notice that they all have apostrophes, but there's a difference right here. It's either plural possessive form or it's either a singular possessive form. Right, so in order to solve a possessive form, one major tip is you have to look for a noun that follows. Remember that possessive form re means that it just means that ownership of a noun is what they're asking. So going back, try to see if there's a noun and you do see a noun form, signs, so you know for sure that there should be a possessive form that follows. So going back, you know that all these are correct. Abstract would just be an adjective. But remember that an adjective should not be divided from a noun that it's modifying with an unnecessary punctuation. So highly likely that A or C could be the answer. Now let's talk about singular or plural subjects that we're talking about, right? So in the previous sentence, we see geometric signs with an S. So you know that it's a plural form that they're referencing and you just match that plural form. So the best answer would be A. So when you're solving these possessive forms, they're used to show ownership of a noun. Remember that definition in your head. You have to pay attention to the singular or plural reference of the subject as well. All right, let's move on to the next question, number 19. This is also a grammar type. So you're going to start off where the blank is included, right here. Because, right, it starts it off with a dependent clause. The debris orbits at 17,500 miles per hour. Even objects the size of a grain of salt can tear through a spacesuit. And now we notice that you've got one verb form, but you also have a coordinating conjunction that connects maybe another verb form. And of course, something that comes before that verb would be the subject. Okay, so verb one and verb two should be matching, but they should also be parallel. That's the basic rule of an English sentence. It has to be parallel, right? So let's go and look at the answer choices. You see A, B, C, and D. Now this shows us that it's asking us different verb forms. Practice until you can tell the main predicate verb apart from the verbal form. Now these verbal forms include participles, gerunds, both probably having verb ing, and in the case of participle verb ed, or you also have the infinitive form, which is two plus verb form. So these verbals are actually not functioning like verbs. They look like verbs, but they're not. So you have to differentiate them. Note that the participle form is shown as verb ing, verb ed, or verb d. So you have to figure out that the participle is functioning as an adjective and not as a verb. All right, so A would be an infinitive form, verbal, with a two plus verb, and B would be the main predicate verb, also in the present tense. And C, have killed would be present perfect, okay? But that's also the main predicate verb. And finally, D has the verb ing. Usually in the answer choices, if it has the verb ing, there are participle forms, so verbals as well. So to sum it up, A and D are verbals, not functioning as verbs. B and C are main predicate verbs. So going back to the passage, you know that you need a main predicate verb form, but it should also be parallel. So you want a present tense main predicate verb. So go back, look for it, and you see an answer choice that pops up. The best answer would be B. Let's go on to the next question, number 20. Water molecules in a super cooled state. Although it has a prepositional phrase, this prepositional phrase is connected to the subject. So water molecules would be simply the subject of the sentence. And then you see a comma that opens up. Now, when you see a comma, comma in between the subject and the verb, it's usually in the case of a non-essential clause. In other words, it's just bonus or extra information that's providing some detail about the previous referenced subject. So you have retain as the main predicate verb. Retain means to keep, right? To maintain, to keep. So subject and verb which means it has the basic components of an independent clause, 
until a sudden movement blank. And then starting from here to the last part of the sentence, you see at which point, right? Or arrange themselves into a crystal structure. And then you've got the comma, which again. So when you see which, or even the prepositional forms, you know that these are not pointing to a main relative clause, but it's talking about a DC, right? So you know for sure that it's a dependent clause. Now, in that case, you know that the latter part is not an IC. So in order to make this a perfect, complete sentence, you do need to match the tenses. Now, they retain their liquid form until a sudden movement blank them, which means you need a tense form that matches the previous parts. So this is a verb form tense question. You have to maintain the tense established earlier in the passage. And if you cannot find the hint in the given sentence, you always look through the previous sentences and try to figure out what the hints are. All right, so in this case, you see a main present tense. So you just match it up with that one. And then you see a present tense form right here, B. So that's the best answer. Hello guys, we're working on lesson 13 today. Um, this is focusing on test five, model one, from question 15 to 21. These are all standard English convention types. So let's focus on those grammatical rules. All right, let's start with the very first question, number 15. Since this has a pretty lengthy sentence connected by multiple commas, we're gonna start off from the very beginning. As ambient air temperatures increase as a result of climate change, now that would include a conjunction, so it starts off with a dependent clause. Now plants would be the subject, will produce would be the verb. So it has the basic components of an independent clause, I see. An increasing amount of a particular set of chemicals, biogenic, volatile, organic, blank. And then you've got a relative pronoun, which usually modifies the noun that comes before it. And you've also got comma participle and participle as well. Okay, so these are multiple dependent clauses attached to an IC. So considering the fact that it's already an IC and it has a relative pronoun, then we're looking for that noun that it's trying to modify. Let's take a look at answer choice A, B, C, and D. Right, so this is obviously a punctuation type because it has parentheses, it has a comma, right, it has double commas. So when you're solving these punctuation types, you have to divide the boundary first, the independent clause, the dependent clause part of the sentence, and you also differentiate the punctuation for the non-essential clauses. For example, abbreviation from the punctuation that stands for separating the supplementary clause like a dependent clause. So in this case, you have to look at the parentheses that usually shows a non-essential, but in this case, it would be abbreviation of the name of the noun that came before it. So if you use A, the only error that it has would be there is no comma differentiating that abbreviation from the relative pronoun, the relative clause. So it would be a missing punctuation error. And for B, it has a comma right before the parentheses that shows the abbreviation, but do you need double uh, punctuations right here? No, actually, it's the noun that's being modified and it's the abbreviation that stands for the noun. So you do not need a unnecessary comma right there. And for D, it also has another comma, which makes it two not essential pairings. And that would also be wrong punctuation. So the only answer that would make sense would be using one abbreviation non-essential punctuation pair and also using a comma to differentiate the relative pronoun that comes right after it. So the best answer was C. Now, what about number 16? In this case, this is also grammar type, so let's start with the very beginning of the sentence. U.S. President, which would be the title, Dwight Eisenhower, a, a possessive form, Adams for Peace program, so that program would be the subject, played, and then you've got the verb, which means it's basically the independent clause, a complete sentence. 
an important role in establishing precedence for the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Now, you notice a comma that's already given to you in the passage, an agreement, which is a noun phrase, and then you've got a relative pronoun that. So if you have a relative pronoun that, it means that no matter how short or long it is, this entire thing would be the relative clause that's attached to the independent clause, okay? So it's modifying the noun. So in this case, let's take a look. If you have a relative clause, you need a main predicate verb. So this would be a verb form question, but it also asks you to look at whether the subject and verb agree in number, right? So you note the relative pronoun in the given sentence, right here, that. So look at the antecedent that comes right before it, which is an agreement, and that's considered a singular. So look for the verb forms that match the singular form. Have would not work, were would not work, and you need an S for that singular. So the best answer would be C. Now, one tip for these relative pronouns like that, who, or which would be, they are directly modifying the noun that comes right before it. So if you're looking for that subject, you have to look right before it, look for that noun that it's modifying. Okay, singular noun in this case. Now let's move on to the next question, number 17. Let's start with the sentence. The head right system, which would be the subject, you've got the relative pronoun which differentiated by the comma, and you've got a comma that closes off this relative clause, which could be like a non-essential clause, okay? So non-essential clauses would only provide bonus information, okay? And now you've got was used, which would be the main predicate verb of the sentence. So you've got the subject, you've got the verb, but you continue reading and you notice something. You've got the coordinating conjunction and another verb. Now, is it possible to have multiple verbs in a given sentence? Of course, yes. So it could be verb one and also verb two. So they're connected by a coordinating conjunction. And finally, right after this, you see Bayland, North and South Carolina and Georgia. Does it have a main predicate verb in the following part? No, it does not have a main predicate verb. So if it does not have a main predicate verb, it proves that it's just basically a list, a dependent clause, okay? Noun phrases. So it's connecting an IC, right? Subject and verb to a DC. Let's look at the answer choices. Now, with a quick glance, you notice that there are some commas, and there are some answer choices that do not have commas, and you also have a colon right here. Okay, so one tip is you find the non-restrictive element in the sentence, and a colon should only be preceded by an independent clause. So if you use the word including, it would leave the latter part a DC, but it would also make the, the left side not an independent clause. It would be an incomplete sentence that's hanging open. You need to include what? It's including A, B, and C. So there's no need to use a call in here to just cut off the sentence unnecessarily. All right, so that would be wrong punctuation usage. And you've also got A and B, which are both not something that's used to list. So if you have comma including, right? It looks okay, but it's missing a comma right here. If you're trying to list things, you need to differentiate each item with a comma. So it's missing comma, and B is also missing a comma right here and right here. So the best answer would be C. So this first comma is differentiating the IC from the DC. The latter comma would be differentiating the items of the list. So the answer was C.